Welcome back to Kind of Funny's Kung Fu Panda in review. Of course, I am Tim Geddes. I'm joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. It's Gadoosh. Gadoosh. It's Christmas in February. Joey Noel. Hello. I'm the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Get ready to dance with Get danger. Dance with <laughs> danger, everybody. Uh, I don't know if Cameron Kennedy is watching live right now, but if you are, I just want to let you know, you were my favorite of all the people. He just sent me something that... Oh, no. The amount of times I'm like, God, this is your no. best work. Like, I think this is his best work. <laughs> See, thing, it's rarely ever targeted at me, and I, I'm still dreading it. Yeah, no, it's th this is uh, the Willy Wonka uh, one haunted me. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm gonna put this out there. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drop the drop a little tease for it. It, uh, it it's gonna signify the a very special event, the end of the DCEU. Oh wow! No. It is uh, an intro for for Aquaman. Yes. Too, oh goodness! That we will does. do uh, whenever it's coming to streaming, and it, God. I can't wait for y'all to see this because it's <laughs> it's really, really good. But that'll have to wait for another day. We're talking about the panda, everybody. Kung Fu Let's Panda go. 3. Um, if you love what we do, please support us with the Kind of Funny membership over on Patreon or YouTube. You can get the shows ad-free. You can watch them live as we record them. You also get a daily exclusive show from one Greg Miller. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kashan Patel, Nathan Lamoth, Karen Lind wait, Lindner, uh, James Hastings, Casey Andrew, Casey Kern. We appreciate all of you so very, very much. We could use one or two more Casey's. There's a lot of Casey's. Yeah. <laughs> Casey Jones. I got in my head about it, too. I was looking at it. Because one Casey's with a K, one's with a C. Kind of threw you off of it. Yeah, and I was like, oh, yeah. crap, there's a lot going on here. Um, we're talking about Kung Fu Panda 3, everybody. And, and a reminder for everybody, uh, Kung Fu Panda 4 comes out in, in March, I want to say. So we're going to be taking a little bit of a break. Um, we just had a three-week back-to-back open slot. So we did these to get ahead because next week... <laughs> <laughs> it's Madam Web time, oh my baby. Goodness. It's happening. Did y'all see the Dakota Johnson clip going viral? There's so many of them. Which one? The, the new one? The new the one? The one where they're explaining about the quote. It's so good. And she doesn't get why it's no. funny. I it's, love it. It's, the, it's the issue of all of the chronically online people trying to explain jokes to I anybody who's not on the internet. So in the trailer, <laughs> what's the most important line? From my Madame mother Web. died or something in the Amazon getting researching spiders, researching spiders. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. She was doing a press tour and then one of the like media people were just like, so like you kind of had a little viral moment with this. Like, what are your thoughts? She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and like the, with, with the line and she's like, what line? And he's like, the line. and he reads the line and she's just looking at him like, what's weird about it? And he's like, well, just out of context. It's really funny. She's like, yeah, well, anything out of context is out of context. And it was just yep. like, she's not wrong. <laughs> it was, I just fucking love it. I can't wait for this what movie. What a disaster this I has been so wait, far. Andy, it's it's one of the so... worst press periods leading up to a movie. Ever. And then in the other <laughs> interview, her being like, yeah, uh, studios are afraid to take risks. And when they do, it's bad. And every movie is like not good anymore. <laughs> she's just out here just talking, man. It's, it's I think great. she's mad. I think she feels like she got duped into what she thought was the MCU and found out that it wasn't. I, uh, yeah. Where's Tom Holland? Like, no, no, no. That's a different, <laughs> that's what? A different what do you man. mean? He's doing Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to talk about that next week because we need to talk about this little panda here. Shakespeare? Kung Fu. Yeah, he's doing a... Uh, no, I was like, are we talking about Shakespeare next week? <laughs> well, Tom Holland's doing Shakespeare. What's he doing? Where's he doing Shakespeare? But, why, but when are we talking about this? I think this? in London on the West Whatever you want. That's so cool. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. I want to see Tom see Holland it, right? do Shakespeare. Yeah. Right? When can we do I that I hate Shakespeare, review? but that'd be fun. <laughs> in London. Exactly. Yeah. London baby. Can we tweet at him and say, hey, cool that you're doing Shakespeare, but could you do literally any other play that's actually fun to watch? You know what I mean? What's Romeo and Juliet? Juliet? <sighs> you know what's what? I mean? what? One. There's no, there are no fun Shakespeare oh, plays. That's what I'm saying. Got it. Okay. Can you be like, maybe he could be in the bodyguard or, yeah. the, you know, the bodyguard. Like, <laughs> the, no, like, the new Mrs. Home. Doubtfire play that's coming to San Francisco. I want to see that. You'd rather have him be in the Mrs. Doubtfire. Could you imagine, play? like, you for Janaya Doubtfire. My dear. Also, there's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> He's a disaster. He's a disaster. <laughs> God, I love Nobody it. Nobody likes this, Shakespeare. This morning, Nick walks up to me and he goes, Hey, Andy, do you want to tell Kevin about uh, the TikTok I sent you last night, which is the same one that you sent me a month earlier? <laughs> I sent him a TikTok a month ago. He sent me an Instagram reel last night. I was like, Nick, I sent you this. Like, <laughs> I would expect it. nothing less. It's amazing. It's a though. good one. Yeah. It is. It's it a is little the cat keyboard doing this. Yeah. And then it comes and it just shows a cat floating a cat around. Why is it five sides? It's so good. Oh it's my god! It's funny on Instagram. 
about <laughs> Kung Fu Panda 3, released on January 29th, 2016. Uh, this one had a runtime of 95 minutes, making it the longest Kung Fu Panda movie yet by like three minutes. Good for them. They know what they've got going on. Uh, this one was once again directed by Jennifer uh, Nelson uh, with a co-director, Alessandro Carlini, joining for the first time. They formerly have done a lot of like um, production work and assistant work on DreamWorks projects, but this is the first big like, co-direction one. Music done by Hans Zimmer once again, but this time exclusively. The, the last couple movies oh. were partnerships. This is all... All the Zims. He said, I don't need a partner. It was like that character arc in his life. Exactly. Uh, this one had a budget of $145 million and a box office of $521 million. Ooh. So still that? cheaper than um, the last movie. Made uh, $80 million or so less, but like pretty Comparable. damn good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still still a, a win and uh, not a surprise that they're making a, a fourth one at some point. Panas but are unlike... only two colors, it's a little cheaper to render. That's so, true. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike its is that a panda pack for later? We don't know. <laughs> you gotta say it. You gotta say it, Andy. We're running out of them. Uh, but unlike its predecessors, this is the first Kung Fu Panda film not to be nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, but it was uh, nominated for like pretty much every other award show, and it won a whole bunch of uh, different things too, like the Annie Awards and um, the, a bunch of other of those type of things. Um, but yeah, that is the the stats about Kung Fu Panda Three. Nicholas, I want to start with you. What do you think of this one? I think this movie rounds out the trilogy game quite nicely. Um, I like it a lot, and I, I this this was the one that I remembered more. Two is always the one I'm like I, I had no context for that whatsoever. In fact, maybe I've never even seen two uh, until last week. But this one I just really like, and I think it's got a lot of heart. I think the humor hits a little bit better in this than it did in two for me. Um, shout out to Brian Cranston. Shout out to J.K. Simmons. A excellent additions uh, to, to the group ensemble, and we get a little bit more of the Furious Five here. We get a little bit more. Of all that stuff. It's just kind of more of everything Kung Fu Panda, so I really like it. Joy. I love this one, which I was not expecting. Whoa. But um I liked a lot of things about it. I think obviously Brian Cranston, JK Simmons, so good. Uh I think the idea of uh JK Simmons taking the chi in the underworld and turning them into jade pendants and warriors is maybe one of like the coolest it's things cool. ever. Yeah. Um did not like when they started calling them what was it? I wrote it down. Oh, uh, zombies. Yeah, zombies. I don't think zombies. I like Jade zombies. That. <laughs> that part wasn't my favorite. Oh, it was Jamba Juice. Um, did it make you laugh? It. Yeah, like, it did. It sure did. It got me. Um, I want to <laughs> give, give a shout out to Kate Hudson. Oh god, who was yeah. so Steals fun, and I wish that Steals she would have been in more. Um, and I'm kind of sad that she doesn't do more voiceover work because she's just like you can tell she's Brushing having it, fun. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I loved the dynamic of the two dads coming together and figuring out their dynamic with Poe. I just had a really great time andy cortez i enjoyed it as well way more than i thought i i would i thought this was going to be where it completely fell off and it was still like a, a pretty above average movie for me there's some stuff that you know maybe didn't work out so well i thought that um some of the some of the the plot beats felt a little bit rushed i didn't love kind of here's the plan for how we take on jk simmons near the end but i think it wraps up nicely and it ends with some really cool hype moments. Um, and I uh, I was worried about where the the storyline for the dad was going. I was I thought they were gonna do like a oh this guy's e this yeah. guy's evil. He's actually trying to but I it was a refreshing take on it because like we've seen that story a million times. Uh, you you trust somebody that was from your past and then they're actually here to really screw you over and they're they're actually being paid off by so and so or whatever. But I loved that it was just like, no, I just want you in my life. And I thought that was really damn cool. And the whole, <laughs> I, I loved, uh, I loved the two fathers feuding. And so like, good. Well, yeah, you're, you know, it sucks that your dad's evil or whatever. Don't call him a monster. <laughs> don't call him like, a monster. He's a like, monster, no, but he's still your dad. <laughs> like, a lot of great, a lot of great moments of comedy there. Um, and I still wish that they didn't undercut the serious high moment of like, I'm a freaking dragon. That was like, ah, oh man, I, I wanted time. that moment to continue to be hype. Um, but I get it. You know, kids are going to laugh at that. Um, I thought it was way better than I expected it to be, Tim. How about you? How the hell was Kung Fu Panda 3 this good? I yeah. don't get it, man. <laughs> yeah. And how was 2 that good? Like, the, this franchise, this trilogy so far is like the 10 out of 10 of 8 out of 10s. Like, it gets so much wrong of just like, oh, that moment was great. Why did you ruin it? And even the great stuff, it's like, it's just paint by numbers great but it's great it's yeah. not it's not good it's better than that like 
there is a lot to love here. It's lean as hell. Um, some of the the plot stuff in this one, like I feel like the dad's storylines, like what they were actually doing and getting to the Panda Village was never as interesting as the other stuff, but it was heartfelt and like it was it was so good. That mm. stuff that I just wish that parts of it were a little I, I don't even know what, not tighter, but just like I'm tighter, a little yeah. stronger, I yeah. guess, to to like really make it feel like every moment was uh, equal in terms of how much I was enjoying it. But it all comes together so well. It, it it is just more like it is a lot of just this is the second sequel, this is the end cap to a trilogy. But it kind of earns all of its moments, and by the time the end hits at the end, I'm like, wow, y'all did a great job yeah. with this world and these characters, and like how powered up Poe is feels appropriate, which is wild. And him getting all of his like suit upgrades and stuff. I'm like, what is going on here? Like they really kind of were like, we let's just go for it and have fun. And I feel it's evidence from the DreamWorks intro in the beginning of him, like playing, like running after the moon and like, like getting on it, like it kind of being integrated into the movie. I was like, this is so damn cool. And if there's one thing that I legitimately love about the, these movies. It's the villains. Mm. How do we have three for three straight up bangers? Like, yeah. It's proof that if you just have a great villain that's fun to watch with a interesting enough <clears throat> storyline, your movie's just already that much better than most things out there. And all three of these movies have banger fucking bad guys. J.K. Simmons rules in this. Yeah. I thought that after uh, the second movie, I was like, there's no chance the villain's going to be nearly as interesting. Holy crap, man. Cool as hell. The freaking Kratos, like, oh, Blades of Chaos thing is going awesome. on. But, like, <laughs> all of the, the, the idea of the, the, the Chi and the idea of all of the pandas and all, everybody, like, figuring out their passion to unlock their ability. Come on, yeah, man. Dude, it was Incredible. Sick, Come pin a rock. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was going to say real quick that I, I was worried about the tonal direction they were taking with J.K. Simmons, and it ended up being perfect. Like, I think... Had they gone the more serious route, it still would have been cool, but it would have felt samey in a lot of ways compared to the last two villains mm -hmm. that we had and how much we loved them, but they were like either super self-serious or super psychotic. And I loved that there were a lot of more humorous moments with J.K. Simmons while you not, you still taking him super seriously. Like you're watching yeah. him decimate this whole crew. Everybody's becoming a little Jade Pendant and Poe is next. And I just loved those stakes. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I, I second that. I think that they J.K. Simmons had kind of an uphill battle trying to find a uniqueness to this because we had we did have the psychoticness of Gary Oldman, and then we had uh, Shane Mc no Ian, not Ian not, McShane Ian McShane who was just cool and badass and ominous, and so I think they played it for a little bit of jokes, but just the right amount, right? Like the Star Lordness of it that nobody really knows who he is, and then when they find out, they're like, "Oh man, this is crazy." And he's like Uguay's oldest like friend, but also a villain. And the fact that they brought Uguay back, yeah, oh my God. and he's yeah. the main character, and he can just be a character in this it's is great. A fantastic. Somehow Uguay is returned. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the strength of this, honestly, for me, is in the structure, right? I think that I, I love that all of the characters, including the B story of the two dads, go back to back. What what the, the theme is, which is finding yourself. And and at the end of it, he realizes that he is both worlds. He is a goose and he, he is the son of a goose, son of a panda, all these things that all go into making him and he teaches them as they're teaching him. So it's a really, really, really good lesson and, and really strong at the end and it totally works. And, and honestly, like that's, I think what makes all these movies so special is that all three of them, uh, the first one was like such a great hero's journey story. And this, when you look at it as a trilogy, it's like, this is, Everything about it is formulaic. Everything about it we've seen before, but it's presented well, and it is th – there's very little fat on it. It's yep. very, like, let's get to the themes. If it doesn't back up the theme, we don't include it. And it works, and it works in an hour and a half, yep. three times back to back, and, like, you get so much world from this stuff. Like, it's it's really, really cool. I'm interested in four. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I what are they going to do here? But. Well, um, how did you feel about – the visual differences, like uh, upgrades wise. This was definitely the first time watching one that I didn't have moments being like, ugh, this is ugly. Like, I, it just didn't bother me this time. I'll tell you the only moments I did notice it were like, I, I couldn't notice a whole lot of uh, visual upgrades from the first two, uh, mainly part two to now when they're in the daylight shots. But those later nighttime shots, look stunning i thought they did such a great job with rendering and shading and there's there's a moment where uh jk sims's character is like i believe he's talking to um oh shifu? god shifu and he's kind of like in light and he kind of like passes a shadow and looks and like the green eyes really really stick out 
they uh, any sort of nighttime scene looked absolutely stunning and even cooler for me was the montage sequence mm. they did a lot of different coloring with mm. like the, the the color correction and everything had like this sort of orange tone on it in some moments and they got super artsy with it. I loved that whole montage it, scene. I feel like the first two movies kind of had moments that like teased uh, really interesting, cool, like the, the yin yang twin transition yeah. and things like that. And there was moments. Yin yang twins. twins. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. That's hilarious. <laughs> transition. Uh, and it, it, that stuff was like super cool. But I feel like this movie really, both storyline wise, action choreography, and just like cool visual stuff, was like, let's leave nothing on the table. Like, this is our last hurrah. Let's just throw it all out there. And man, it paid off. It yeah. was. Pretty damn cool. How about the fact that they actually set up something at the end of the second movie that paid off well in this movie too? Yeah, yeah. that could have been a that could have been a problem, but mm -hmm. they, they, I think they nailed that. Yeah, super super cool. Uh, we're gonna get into the plot of all of this in just a second. Um, before that, here's a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by kindoffunny.com slash store. We've got two brand new drops for you this week. First, check out the Kind of Funny broadcast line. Old School Telethons inspired this distressed design and collection for our annual Kind of Funny Day campaign, which includes a t-shirt, tote bag, and coffee cup. Our cozy collection, designed by Nick at Campfire Designs, is also available. Get nice and snuggly in your choice of a crew neck sweatshirt and joggers and a women's cropped hoodie. These have been big hits with the team, and we think you'll love them too. Both collections are available for the next two weeks on kindoffunny.com slash store. Grab them while you can. Here's the plot for Kung Fu Panda. Whoa! One more time. There you go. Nailed Here's the plot it. for Kung Fu Panda. Go ahead, Dan. ladies and gentlemen. I tried my hardest. Kung Fu Panda we'll get on number 3. Four. <laughs> get ready to dance with danger. Kate Hudson stole this movie. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> I think she did. I think it was the perfect amount of Kate Hudson in this film. I think we need more. We start off. Maybe we'll get her in four. Who knows? <laughs> uh, dad, uh, dad, save me. <laughs> what does he say? There's a moment where like Kate Hudson's like really coming on him and flirting right. with him. And he has like a, dad, help me. <laughs> he has a real quick <laughs> sort of line delivery that was perfect. Uh, we get it. We start with a fun redo of the DreamWorks logo with the kid fishing, but instead it is uh, Poe going up there. I've said this before, but I, it's worth mentioning again. This logo is always weird to me. Like DreamWorks? the kid, yeah, the DreamWorks logo with the kid fishing from the moon. I'm like, hey, this is off putting. I don't like it. What? I don't, <laughs> I like don't it. know. I think it's cool. What do you mean? I don't like it. Well, what's off putting about it? What are you doing up there? He's <laughs> what are you doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Are you fishing, Nick? This is, or? I don't like it. It's not classic. <laughs> this is the most like senior citizen Nick take I've ever. I like, just uh, I remember being like, I don't know, what was that little kid doing up there? <laughs> I just remember seeing it for the first time. Like, you're trying to make a classic logo. Get out of here. I, you know, I it's not. It's never gonna be Paramount. It's never gonna be Columbia. It's never gonna be any of these things. The Get reflection out of, here. of the water. Mm, yeah. It's cool. I don't like it. <laughs> He's yeah. even doing like this Joe down. Biden thing. Like, Get him down. Get him down. Get that malarkey out of here. We cut. To over to Ugwe, who is back, baby. He's finally found his inner peace uh, in the spirit realm until his old friend Kai fi uh, finds him for a rematch. Shout out to J.K. Simmons. Uh, love how Ugwe, I love this whole fight thing. The, the setup here, of course, is that uh, Kai has been uh, hunting down all of the masters of the spirit realm, taking their chi harness and that. And the last one he needs for uh, to get back to the mortal realm is Ugwe's. Uh, they fight, and Ugwe has that cool style of fighting where he like draws out whatever the move is, the technique awesome. he's going to do, and then shoots it at him, sort of like. Uh, Doctor Strange, yeah, Doctor Strange, notes. yeah, <laughs> super cool. I love it. I love all this. I love the visuals here. Uh, of course, uh, Ugwe hitting you with the pearls of wisdom. Uh, when you realize uh, the more you take, the less you have is basically what he's saying. And Kai's like, nope, no care. Uh, he beats Ugwe, steals his chi, and turns the old master into a jade uh, trinket. And he places on his belt. Cut over to the mortal realm. Poe and the Furious Five are on the move. And this is hype as hell, dude. But they're just going to lunch. This Great whole, comedic <laughs> moment. It's pitch perfect, man. Yeah. Like they, they earned all this stuff of like the hype of the villain. Super cool. Like oh, we get the plot. They're collecting the masters and their powers. Yeah, nothing cooler in the fucking world. And then when it hits to them, and we got the team together, parkour and through, they decapitate a cloud. <laughs> like that's oh, awesome. Yeah. A like, rhino cloud. Yeah. So so cool. And then yeah, the played for the joke of them just getting lunch. It was like. Y'all earned it, man. That Great line good. delivery. Yeah, that, that stuff hit really good for Yeah, me. they have a moment where they're ordering, and he orders for Tigress, who is always the most solemn of all the five. And uh, one of them says, you know, sauce on side. 
which is always such a thing you know, like when you're friends and you remember to remind your friend of what their order is. I like that small little bit of character yeah. building there. Uh, they head over to Shifu, who teaches them. Did said something about a dramatic entrance? That's next. Oh, okay. Uh, they head over to Shifu, who teaches them the virtue of a dramatic oh, entrance. Okay. Uh, he tells them today will be his final class because he's heading. Oh, uh, he's handing over training to the Dragon Warrior, and then he shows them his final move, the dramatic exit. And you think it's just a joke, but it comes back in the third act. <laughs> I don't know if you guys caught Amazing. that about. Yeah. Can we talk oh. about the dramatic entrance being the most Tim Getty thing it. of all Dude, time. Trust me. I, like when that when that was said, I was like, all right, I think this is gonna be my number one. <laughs> like so they they maintained it. They made they paid off. Poe, of course, does not want to teach. He does not think he's got what it takes. But the Furious Five bow to him, and Tigress reminds him, all you have to lose is our respect. It goes poorly, of course. He starts the training, and it just does not work at all. He overhears some goose, geese, or ducks. I don't know. I always get confused. I think some of them are ducks, some of them are geese. I don't know. They look like, we'll just call them geese. What's good for the duck is good for the goose. Goose, good goose, maverick. Talking shit about him, and uh, he hides. And then... <laughs> This got a laugh out of me because he didn't want he didn't want them to see him, so he goes over and hides, and then the camera just cuts over. They're just staring at him, <laughs> and they're like, and then they just tell him again that he sucks. They're like, "Oh, that was mean." <laughs> uh, and then of course, uh, Shifu has set him up for failure, and he's like, "Well, why why would you do that? Like, I'm comfortable being who I am." And he says, "If you only do what you can do, you'll never be more than you are." Uh, Ugwe, of course, saw greatness in Poe. There's an incredible power that awaits him. Uh, beyond anything that he could possibly imagine. Shifu, of course, has has mastered his inner peace or is on the, on, on the cusp of mastering his inner peace. And what he's able to do is harness his chi and revive a flower that is a dying, which is pretty cool. Yes. Uh, 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 oh, if I teach you, I'll be able to do that. And he says, no, if you teach, I'll be able to do that. Because basically, it's, I, I, just continuing the, the fun back and forth between uh, Shifu just wanting a freaking break from everyone. Uh, but first, you must answer the question, who am I? And that is our theme stated of this movie. That is what Poe's journey is going to be. Kai arrives in the mortal realm, and he's got more nicknames than Kevin. Supreme Warlord of China, the Jade Slayer, the Master of Pain, the be Jade the Beast Slayer. of Vengeance, the Maker of Widows. Uh, That's, what That's what we call Kevin. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Pretty badass. It's fucking cool. It's so cool. Uh, and then he does what I, I missed this the first time and I didn't cu quite catch it until they call out. He actually can take all the trinkets, like the little jade statues, throw them out, and, and he has the powers of the masters. He can see through them and sort of control them, which is rad. I mean, dude, what a great setup because then cool we all know the good guys are going to have to fight their friends yep. yeah. and it's going to be it's awesome. awesome. And it scary. was every single time. And as it built up getting to Shifu, I'm like, no, this is going to be so easy. sad. Uh, it's the first time I felt. Like a, a real sense of danger with them, because before any of them had been captured, I had been wondering, like, well, I wonder if they'll ever kill off one of these dudes. Yeah. Probably not. It'll be too traumatizing. But <laughs> what if? Maybe. And then to kids suddenly see them all captured was, I thought, really awesome near the end. And shout out to this dude's theme song. Anytime yeah. Kai's on screen, it's like, oh, Hans Zimmer was going off on this, and like that, it made it so freaking like badass and scary. But like. You were saying this earlier, Nick. Like the performance J.K. Simmons gives is like there's an interesting confidence to him that mm -hmm. doesn't feel like he's trying to be scary. Mm -hmm. He just is. Yeah, you know. I want to give a shout out to the Jade as well. I like the rendering of that, right? Yes. Especially when you see yeah. Crane later and you're seeing like through his eyes and because the, the, they're kind of translucent, yeah. you can kind of see through them. It's really, really off putting. And it to must, your guys' point, I, I I was thinking about the rendering and the material work. It must have been real hard to make it look not like just a like a stand-in texture because th because of the nature of it, it just, at points, it just looks like green blobs, but they did a great yeah. job with like... The subsurface yeah, scattering yeah, and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, that stuff where like, you know, where the character's eyes were, they were a bit more lit up and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a really great job. Part of me, though, did want to lick him a little bit, you know? Yeah. You see him and you go, yeah. looks like a, some sort of Jolly Rancher. Like maybe we licked off me. all the, the caramel on him, the little apple pops. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real good yeah. pull. It reminded me of Gooigi from Luigi's Oh, Band. yeah. Ew. I don't know. All of us on different planes. <laughs> Joe, what did you remind you of? <laughs> Blubber. Blubber. <laughs> Blubber. Okay. Blubber. Right. Poe heads home to take a bath, and his dad tells him that being a teacher is a promotion because Poe uh, po is worried about it, of course. Uh, and, and then to Mr. Ping's perfect character you're like oh he's being supportive of his son and he goes no 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 that means w when you have the run of the palace i can sell noodles in the lobby so he's I, always kind of thinking about himself there a little bit i he's wish the best. that i loved anything best. as much as mr ping loves because <laughs> i just like 
That's it, his brain only ever right. on noodles and po. And you gotta love that. You gotta be hustling, Joey. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's out there. So you know how many noodle salesmen there are in this in this peaceful valley? A lot. <laughs> Mr. Pings is the best. I have something I'd like to confess right now. Never had noodles. No, there was a moment I was I was just going along with Joey mentioning flubber, even though I didn't understand it. So I was mm -hmm. thinking, that's a, that's a little a little white guy. Nope. I was thinking Glover. Oh. <laughs> the video game, and then I well, just I, I, for the last similar, thing. yeah, yeah. for the last twenty Shit. seconds, I've just been thinking like, who the fuck is Flavor? Oh, Robin Williams, yeah, the green when goo, they were in the, the green little conga line, and there's yeah. so many of them dancing. Mm -hmm. That was like the first like blow, yeah. like that CG blew me away as a kid. I, <laughs> me and my brother saw this movie in theaters, and at the time, I thought it was Star Wars. <laughs> like I thought we were watching the most important movie ever. Made. Huge. That Huge. was me with Small Soldiers, <laughs> right? Yeah, dude. It, that I was like, man. Small Soldiers is oh. gonna be a like right. one of ten movies that are gonna come out. <laughs> Tim's just the only person camping out for the Nutty Professor. <laughs> like, <laughs> we saw the clumps at the same thing. I mean, yeah. they're great. I will say, I had a flubber themed birthday party. There was a lot of green Jello. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is incredible. Nothing wrong with that. The scene, of course, gets interrupted when news hits that someone is beating his uh, his dumpling eating record. Of course, uh, when they pop over into the main portion of the restaurant, it's Lee Shan. And he's a big panda. And he's looking for his son. No way. I lost my father years ago. Well, hope you find, <laughs> hope you find your dad. Hope you find your son. And, and they got that perfect beat where it was like, come on. <laughs> come on. Put it together. This should have not worked, but yeah. it did. Like just the the timing and like this is one of those like Jack Black got the stuff when it comes to oh, yeah. performing where it's like they really sold this. Po uh, of course, they realize that they are father and son. Poe's real name is Little Lotus, is what he was named at birth. Mister Ping does not like Lee, of course, because he feels threatened by him. Lee tells him that there's a secret panda village. He received a message. He's like, well, if it's so secret, how did someone get you a message there? And he goes, I got a message from the universe. And you're like, he's full of crap. Or not. We'll see. He takes his dad to the Hall of Heroes, and they both wonder if they can fit in Flying Rhino's armor. This is one of my favorite scenes of the movie, because his dad sort of gives him uh, it, uh, permission to behave badly, and then it just goes off the rails fast. Great. Probably the funniest laugh that I got the entire time was Master Rat's little helmets. Look how small they are. <laughs> oh, my Lord. That was so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And then, of course, the dad, he's like, we, should, we absolutely should not try Master Rhino's armor on. And then he walks over. <laughs> he's like, go, go, go. His dad just walks over. Can't see through it's it. It's fucking like mech armor. Yeah. The flying Bad Rhino. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what part was it where uh, Mr. Pean gives him the little pot? He's like, no, not that pot. Give him this little pot. It was like a ding. Whatever he was. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, a, the, the village at the end. It's a great moment. Uh, let's see. Po, uh, we get the first beat of uh, them riding around in this armor. And then Poe throws up. We'll get that com comedic beat a couple more times. Uh, dolphin style. Holy crap. Tim, do you, did you laugh as hard as I laughed where dolphins, when he retreats? And he goes, this is dolphin style. Goes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, man. Yeah, there was a, a, a maybe this like a 10-minute stretch here that I was, me. like, laughing hard. <laughs> um, correction, Hans Zimmer did not make that song. Did not make Kai's song. Who did? Some people in chat were saying, like, yes, Hans Zimmer, not someone else is doing it. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it Samuel Kim is the composer for Kai's song specifically. Wait. What? Yeah. The YouTuber? <laughs> yeah. Samuel, what? He's composed music for films, web series, and commercials. Yeah, I mean, well, that's fucking awesome. I love Samuel Kim. I did not know he he was part of that, and that was not on Wikipedia. But holy shit. It, I mean, maybe it's a YouTuber. Good I don't for know. him. That's... Maybe it's just another guy named Samuel Kim. I mean, it's that. I'm not surprised. That sounds like his stuff. Okay. So that's really, really cool. So shout out to Alex GB and Jeffrey Kirby in the chat. Keeping us honest. Shifu and the five interrupt the scene, but Lee can't see through the armor, so he keeps Rhino headbutting Poe in the stomach, and I laugh. The alarm sounds, and Poe is overjoyed to be uh, to get a reprieve. Now his father can finally watch him in action, and this is where we get our first glimpse of the Jade Masters or Jade Zombies or. Jombies. Jombies, as we will call them for the rest of the time. Jason now, Jambi. this joke is, let me explain everyone. This joke is funny for two reasons. One, it's the kind of low-brow, low-hanging humor that I would say on a daily basis. Yeah. I Just word association. I my eyes and exactly. why I hated it. Two, they continue to call them zombies for the rest of the movie, <laughs> which makes me, it's so validating. Yes. You know, when I come up with something that dumb and then see it mirrored in a $500 million gross movie, you're like, you're, I'm doing something right. I'm doing something right. <laughs> I'm on the right side. You guys are on the wrong side. Know. Get on the right side. I don't know. Why? You were just encouraging. 
judging him. Yeah, no, I'm just like, I'm explaining why he feels right about this, and I don't like it. <laughs> but you're starting to come around. Uh, I want to give another shout out to one of the dumbest, but just gets got me every single time gags they have in here where, hey, take a picture, but somebody has to draw the picture. It's oh, so blinked. funny to me. It's a good moment. <laughs> They have a picture, of course, uh, in the beginning of it. Uh, I think I skipped over this, but there's oh, a yeah. moment where he takes a picture with his dad, and then uh, Mr. Ping pops up, too, so it's his two dads. That picture will come back later when right. he realizes that he is actually both of those things, which is great. That's set up in the first act, which is wonderful. This one's really funny. He's like, hold on, it was Master. I think it was like Master Porcupine or something. He's like, take a picture with me. Like, he tries to hold on to him, which is great. And the guy's got to like dry. He's like, oh, I blinked. <laughs> Uh, this whole fight was awesome. Though. This is cool. Yeah. Like, like the team attacks of all of them together, where they're like doing like coordinated like moves, was mm -hmm. so freaking cool. And it ending with like the the joke of him, the bad guy talking through the jade, and then being like, "Oh, they're all talking at once. Like, <laughs> maybe we should do that." Like, just good stuff. <laughs> Uh, no one, of course, has, has ever heard of Kai before. So they head to the archives to find the story of Kai, who used who used to be best friends with Ugwe. During a battle when they were both badasses, uh, Uguay was injured, so Kai carried him for days until he came across an ancient village of pandas who, of course, had mastered the power of chi. Kai wanted that power. He was overtaken by greed, uh, and Uguay unfortunately had to fight him and banish him to the spirit realm. Uh, if he were if he were return to return, he could only be stopped by a true master of chi. Lee, of course, uh, sees an opportunity here and says, I can do that. And he's like, can you do that? Daddy? He's like, of course I can. I'm a panda. We can teach you, but you have to come home with me. You must rediscover what it means to be a panda. Mr. Ping, of course, does not like this. So he hitches a ride in Poe's backpack so he can take care of Poe. But Loki, of course, because he's threatened by, but he's scared of losing Poe. We all know that. And he'll, he'll say that later. He in finally the got him. What, Little Lotus, right? Little Lotus. Uh, they get to the base of the Panda Village, and Lee shows Poe the uh, the one thing he's been waiting his entire life to see, an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. The village at first is underwhelming, uh, but then once the fog clears, it is spectacular. Uh, uh, real quick, though, I do love the whole time Mr. Ping just shitting on everything. <laughs> Like wanting this yeah. experience to be miserable. Yeah. Just that one friend. All of the all. one friend that didn't want to come out that night. <laughs> it's just every little comment is like, oh, look at this now. This is so inconvenient for us. Like, <laughs> always bummed out that there's always a nice solution for all the problems. I'm going to pop in real quick because uh, obviously I can't stop thinking about this Samuel Kim music situation. Apparently, no, 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 no. Samuel Kim just did a remix. Just did a YouTube video. Oh. Of, 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 of like making an epic version of it because that's what he does. Okay. It's an Imagine Dragons song. Oh, so, okay. like that, but it was composed with Hans Zimmer and Imagine Dragons. So, I don't know. Apparently, there's a song called I'm So Sorry that is like the theme of this movie. It was like a vocal theme that was also the same melody <laughs> as Kai's theme. Interesting. So, mm. more you know. And yeah. Ben Loblick in the other YouTube chat said, Are we talking about Twitch chat or does any have imaginary chat friends? No, there's two YouTube chats right now yeah. Patreon, Patreon chat. and YouTube members. Yeah, and Imagine Dragons. And Imagine Dragons. Anyway, sorry about that. I appreciate you all. Poe, one by one, gets introduced to a bunch of pandas in the village. They all teach him how to panda roll for the first time, which is cool. He's like, pandas don't walk, pandas roll. He meets uh, Mei Mei, I think is how you say it. Real quick, I do love when everybody walks in and everybody's all excited to see him. All the little babies popping out of that one little window. So they just cute. all like, it was great <laughs> physics and animation so on them. Cute. It looked so good. And you gotta, you gotta respect how cute these little baby pandas They're are. So They're good. I mean, you can't mess with it. It's so adorable. He meets Mei Mei, played by Kate Hudson, who is a ribbon dancer and very full of herself. For whatever reason, and for, for and for whatever reason, I uh, truly relate to her. Dad Crane help. And <laughs> it's such a good moment, man. What's that? I need to watch that, but Dad, Dad help. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole sequence is just wonderful. Yeah. Crane and Mantis uh, uh, are go out on uh, wings of surveillance, is what, what Crane calls it. They have a fun little back and forth where he's like, you can't just call like everything you do. Like wings of something, like a superhero like, movie. And then, of yeah. course, later Mantis picks that up, where he's like, man, he calls it like Mantis Strike or something like that. That's some pretty funny lines in this. Earlier, there's something where like he hits his arm, and he's like, oh man, my little claw thingy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not my little claw thingy. Yeah. It was yeah, either so. him or the bird that was like, and we found out the tigress is flammable <laughs> oh, in the yeah. beginning. That's I was a like, good one. you guys are good. Uh, yeah, I think Mantis has another bang of lighter where he's like, oh, I'm still green. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's green. Crane and Mantis, they go out to, uh, of course, they spot Master Chicken, Master Croc, and Master Bear. Master Croc, again, played by Jean-Claude Van Damme, even though I don't think he has a single line in this movie. He is still credited as Master Croc. You feel it. You do yeah. feel it. 
uh, one by one, they all go in, even though Crane was like, we should absolutely not be doing this. And then one by one, they get ch- turned into Jade. Crane, Crane, of course, says, uh, screw it, goes in and gets turned into that. The uh, fighting is so sick, man. Of course, uh, before they go in, this is not this is another line that got me. One by one, they go in. And then, and then he's like, wait, Master Chicken's going in. Even Master Chicken's going in. And he's a chicken. And then Master Chicken just like shoots daggers at him. And he's like, bakak. And he like goes in. <laughs> it's really funny. It's very well done. Uh, anyway, one by one, they all get got back at the village. We start learning our lessons to become a panda and get re- uh, get in touch with yourself. And they're a lot like becoming me. Nick, uh, does, uh, does D ever walk by at like look at you watching these movies and just like roll her eye like what this guy's an idiot <laughs> more often than not because i'll watch these in, in our in our spare bedroom <laughs> I'll, I'll like i have the headphones on so i'll just laugh <laughs> and then i just out of the corner of my eye i just see the door close <laughs> every time uh back at the village lesson number one sleep in past noon lesson Hell number yeah. two let the hill tell you where to roll pandas don't know where to roll we let the hill dictate that lesson number three Baby pandas will eat you out of house and home. Lesson number four, at the end of the day, do a nice deep sigh. That was a good moment. Did you all sigh when he did that? I, I did. did. I did. I did. You got it. I felt good. I heard Tim sigh today. And it's <laughs> it was, a sigh I've never heard Tim no, sigh before in my I've entire life. I've never sighed that way before ever. Like, that was, it, it was a, being in a lot you. being expelled. No, it me. wasn't even me. It was oh. just all, his whole day or something. I don't know. You were right there. You heard it. Oh. We it talked about this. Oh. We talk, I don't even remember. <laughs> Poe asks his dad when he'll be ready to master Chi, and you get the sense that his dad is stringing him along. Uh, so he brings Poe home to show him a picture of his mother. Uh, love that all the pictures here, again, are hand-drawn. They're, they're, they're pictures, like take a picture, but they're actually just drawings of them. We get a good beat of the drawing. Uh, oh, this drawing, yeah, sorry. Uh, Lee had it all. He tells him the story. I had it all. I had a wife that I loved, and then I, I just when I thought it couldn't get any better, you came along, Little Lotus, and then I had everything, and in one moment, I lost it all. And we get the same flashback that we saw in two with his mother putting him in the vegetable crate and then running off so that she could, uh, you know, get unfortunately killed by the wolves as a distraction. You don't have to worry about losing me ever again, he tells his father. Back at the Jade Palace, Shifu and the remaining three of the five uh, get messages from all corners of China uh, via arrows, which is cool. They just all start landing in front of them, which is Dude, rad. What a cool shot of Shifu standing there with like looking at it, being so upset, like, oh, we're fucked. And yeah. just like it's zooming out and seeing how fucked they are. Real cool. It reminds me a lot of that. Oh, man, I'm going to get it wrong. It's not Crashing Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It's the Jet Li movie that came out after. The one? No, that was an awesome movie. No, it was and that's a great poll. <laughs> and we should absolutely watch that movie. <laughs> now, I forgot, what it, I forgot what it was, but it was like uh, not Warrior or something like that. There's just a great scene in there where he's like all of the army shoots arrows at him, and he has the same kind of concept. We have to like beat them all down. It's really cool. And someone in the chat, I don't know what it is. Someone just says, love the one. Okay, we're on the, the one. It's fine. We're just going to watch the one later. <laughs> Lee, uh, let's see, uh, the masters have all vanished. Just then, Jade Crane and Jade Mantis arrive as, as the harbingers of Kai. Kai, of course, harnesses his chi and uses Uguay's statue to destroy the Jade Palace, basically tearing it down wall for wall by spinning this massive statue of Uguay. And is this and the coolest awesome. thing we've seen so it's far? Yes. Coolest. <laughs> wow. It's really cool. Again, going back to like to your original concept, right? All this stuff is just, it's it's fairly you know normal stuff it's just done very very well to put in context that probably andy can understand if the original kung fu panda is classic coke the second one is probably vanilla coke this one's cherry coke it's still coke there's variations on something we all love of course that makes sense but they get really creative with this stuff which makes it work right yeah this could have been dumb but it's fun Mm -hmm. i like it did that work for you andy the coke reference let him like it i work can i like something for once in the song yeah I'm not like that stupid kid up on the moon fishing. <laughs> get him down. Get him down. <laughs> so What's he doing up there? How do, get, how do you get up there? What do you? How do you feel? How did you feel about the Coke with the lime in it? Didn't like it. I hate it. If you give me a Coke with a lime, I'm sending that back. I don't want it. Like even at a restaurant? It doesn't belong in there. Don't put fruit in my Coke. Oh, I got a Coke in my lime yesterday at Joe's. You got a Coke good. in your lime? <laughs> yeah, that. Lime you just pour it out of the lime, give you a shot of Coke. Yeah. Good. I just I feel like they are just antagonistic uh, entities that don't belong mm. anywhere near each other. Similar mm-hmm. to Hancock, about- which is like the one, yeah. but this one, you can't be together, Joe. Hear about lemons? I love le- Wait, no, fuck the lemon out of the Coke. Yeah. Okay. Fuck it out of there. <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, just fuck it out of there. <laughs> Poe finally finds his place amongst the pandas and tries to harness his chi using the cool, like, little hand gesture that they learned from uh, from Uguay's scroll. But he's interrupted by a tigress 
with news of doom and gloom. Uh, of course, Mr. Ping immediately interrupts and says, how's my restaurant? We'll talk later because he realizes it's wrong. Lee orders everyone to evacuate the town and Poe finally begs his birth father, father to teach him the secrets of chi, but Lee has to come clean. I don't know it. No one does. Maybe we used to, but we don't anymore. There, there's a scene right before this um, that, like, first of all, I love the, the chi of him trying to bring the, the flower back that Tigris interrupts. Yeah. That was very, very cool. But before that, when we lose some of the other uh, Furious members, the or five members um we get the jackie chan is the like the monkey thing mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and like uh there's the part where he's like combined with the other one and he's like go, like going up in the way he's moving it's classic jackie chan shit and he's like sorry 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 yeah, sorry yeah, yeah. and it's like i just love that they animated him like how jackie chan moves in that's his pretty cool movies, I didn't catch he's just that. like bouncing around everything <laughs> awesome you lied why to save your life he's basically like i heard there was a madman coming to kill you and it's the only thing i could think to do is just to save you here he says, I lost you once. I'm not going to lose you again. You just did. Mr. Ping hugs Poe. I'm so worried about you. I can't even enjoy being right about everything. <laughs> says, I'm going to stay and fight it's that monster. It's just a very Nick character, you know? <laughs> Poe says, I'm going to stay and fight that monster. Mr. Ping says, he may be a monster, but he's still your father. God, it made me laugh. I hate that it made me God, laugh. God, it was so good. Again, James Hong, let's go. One of the reasons why I love this movie and one of the reasons why it's going to rank very highly for me, we put him front and center in this. and yeah. I love it. He's yeah, great. Good point. Mr. P uh, no, not him, Kai. Poe decides to stand his ground and make a dummy version of Kai so he can start working out. Mr. Ping decides to mend fences. He brings Lee some dumplings and confesses that he's been uh, mean to him the entire time because he was worried that Lee would steal Poe away from him. But I was wrong. Having you in Poe's life doesn't mean less for me. It means more for Poe. He says, got me a little uh, in my feelings. Oh, I mean, what a that line. But, uh, uh, Lee says, I lied to him for 20 years. Or he's like, but I lied to him. And Mr. Ping says, oh, well, I lied to him for 20 years. He thought he came from an egg. Uh, sometimes we do things and at least you someone like, really? Like, I love that everyone knows that there's no way that anyone would go for this. Uh, he says, uh, um, sometimes we do the wrong thing for the right reasons. He's hurt, he's confused, and he still has to save the world. He needs both his dads. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Lee spots the picture of them with Poe. Let me see, or Mr. Ping wait, wait, popping up. And he realizes um, he knows uh, he knows the goose is right. Tigress catches up with Poe, and he's more confused than ever. He wants to do the wushu the wushi finger hold on him, but he's not sure if it's going to work. Kai, of course, has a jade army. Poe can't compete unless we have an army too of pandas. Bills. Looks Come over, on. of course, sees so everyone, easy. and realizes, so good. yeah. But you don't even know kung fu. Then you will teach us. I can't even teach Tigress, and she already knows kung fu which is a great line. We can learn Kung Fu. We can be just like you. And then boom, the light bulb moment goes off. And this is where we're kind of, everything starts to piece together. That's what Shifu meant. I don't have to turn you into me. I have to turn you into you. So good. Cool. So good. Who wrote that? <laughs> like who wrote that line? Cause it is good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Uh, and I love this. And right? backing up what the, you know, kind of, Everything. teaching you about your past and your yeah. history yeah. and like learning the things that you've always had kind of within. One by one, of course, he cultivates each of the panda's strengths. Mei Mei gets a set of nunchucks to go along with her ribbons. The kids uh, make weapons out of their hacky sack. Uh, we got noodles. We got the kids that are pa tumbling down. My favorite, of course, and I don't know if the character has a name or not. I couldn't find it on the x-ray, is the hugging panda. The one that just <laughs> hugs things to death. <laughs> kind of fun. It reminds me of Greg for some reason. I like the, the little girl and the big stripey lady. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Somebody so. in chat said that they were all Angelina Jolie's kids. Oh, really? Maybe yeah. That's cool. Oh, that's kind of fun. Uh, Poe, of course, after the training montage, this really fun training montage, looks out over his army and says, they are ready. And then a beat goes by. And Tigers goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I love seeing him being like, good, again. And like being like <laughs> super leader, Poe. It's awesome. And the visuals here throughout this whole sequence, again, very cool. I and, love the way they colored everything. And something I'll say that was like masterfully done with this like montage scene of him training is that it made every joke that could have been overdone made throughout the movie make sense and have a payoff moment mm -hmm. here where I did not expect that to happen. Like every single group of them, every panda, the hugger thing, the little kids uh, and the the big stripey lady shit, like all of that paid off. And I'm like, y'all pulled something off here. Yeah. That's great. And it's good too, because he lays out the basic plan in this next scene. It's got a couple of beats of with the kids eating all this stuff and all that stuff. But the basic plan is not that they fight him. It's to distract them so he can get close enough to do the wooshy finger move and blast him back to the spirit realm. 
The music also, in the montage is also 10 out of 10. So good. Yes, it is. We haven't said these words yet, and that kind of upsets me. The point of this is to banish him to the spirit realm, Andy. Yeah, yeah that's super cool. Holy it's shit. It's super cool. There's but uh oh, it's cooler. time for our favorite segment of the show, everybody. He's a panda, a panda, a panda. Here's a panda fact. Here's a panda, mm. a panda, mm. a panda. Mm. Here's a panda fact. And he's gonna tell you about a fact about a wet bear who is white and black. Here's a panda, a panda, a panda. Here's a panda fact. Get that, the facts real quick on my phone. <laughs> it's a lot to keep track of. Yeah. You know? One second. Here we go. He's a guitar and a piano and What's a What's amazing is at some point, Andy's gonna have four. Oh, sorry, inch. restart it one second. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Oh, well, Andy's got a pedal. I got it. I got it. Double this is like realizing this, that someone's lip syncing. I thought he was playing that the, the entire time. <laughs> thing. No, I, I pre recorded it down here in the thing. Smart. Which is what all the Super Bowlers do. You should. You know that? It's Don't take a timing. chance. Pandas eat for 10 to 16 hours a day. They are like me. I <laughs> know, for real. <laughs> Fuck, man. I took down a half bag of Tostito scoops yesterday. I need a panda. A panda. That was a panda. It was a panda fact. Was that the same bag of Tostito scoops that you were eating on the last episode no, that I you dropped on the floor? No, I threw that one out okay. because <laughs> as, at a certain point, the, the scotch tape that Cool Greg had wrapped around it to keep it closed just wasn't sticking. Got anymore. a bunch of dust in it. Yeah. Got a bunch of salt on it. Yeah. Checked it. Opened up a new bag. I bought a Target the other day. Lee looks over Uguay's scroll and uh, can't help but fixate on the pandas doing the tree with the hand signal. He says, I wish I could have taught you this, son. Then Big Bad Kai arrives. They hear his swords first, which is cool. They hear like that. That's spinning sound kai looks at poe so cool with his jade vision but the way that he launches up the fucking so wall sick. like he scales this shit is so cool we get a very subtle but a very perfect beat of humor here where i think i forget which which one of the jade army statue like masters is looking at him but it looks like it's like x-ray vision and poe goes like, hides his body away from him. <laughs> Stop looking at him like, like he's like, he was yeah. close. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, then the fight kicks off. Poe baits Kai and unleashes by calling him uh, Chatty Chatty or whatever. And then uh, Kai unleashes all of his masters on Poe, including Mantis, who's always been green. Dumpling Squad takes out Crane. Spring Roll Squad takes out Gorilla and Croc. Hug Squad takes out Monkey. Uh, Noodle Squad gets May May. Uh, uh, yeah, no. no, sorry. May May says, get ready to dance with danger as she starts taking out some people. Uh, Tigress fights with her biggest fan, the baby panda, and Poe. Uh, that Poe gave the guy action figure, too. So we get that beat. And then we get the beat of the action figure and Mantis and her wanting to play with both of them. Mantis is like, I'm like a real person at the end. Uh, Kai is distracted as he sees everything through his uh, jade army and can't keep everything straight. So Poe takes that opportunity to move in for the kill with the Wuxi finger hold. But it doesn't work. He says, skadoosh. Hold on. Let me try this again. Skadoosh. And Kai, of course, messes with him. Oh, no, I'm out He's like, that only works on mortals. I am a spirit warrior, is what yes. he says. A spirit warrior. Yes. So fucking cool. And then Kai just whips his ass all over the village. Defeated, uh, Poe tells all the pandas to run, but there's nowhere to go. You really thought you could send me back to the spirit realm. You are just a stupid mortal. And Poe gets another great idea. You're right. I can't send you there, but I can take you there. Poe then uses Shifu's distraction for a massive look over there for an exit wraps himself around Kai and then skadooshes his own finger and they blast off into a golden dust and wind up in the spirit realm Lee was Wai. this perfectly done no no not at all I was still it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's like I, I, this is the one point that I'm like it's a little convoluted and I don't know that I buy this by the yeah. rules you're setting up but it got us to the spirit realm but so. I mean it only gets us to the spirit realm it gets us to we can do this. We like, oh my god, man, <laughs> that was the hypest shit. Everybody just do, you know, and then taught it, us who we stri are. Stripey, <laughs> what is that little girl said? Oh my god, oh man, this is such a good moment, right? He gathers all the pandas around to show them, and then the hand sign from Uge Scroll says, Poe, you taught us who we were all meant to be a father, a friend, a dumpling kicker, a lethal <laughs> fighting machine, a hugger, a nunchuck chick, a strip, a stripey baby, a family. And then a golden light emanates from their hands and starts breaking up the jade on on uh, Poe's body in the spirit realm. Him turning into jade was also really yeah. cool. That was cool. cool. Uh, of course, and then erupting him in a golden aura, his chi is powerful. And how fucking sick is this whole color scheme change? 
the green turning Dude. just to this hopeful sort of beam of light. It was awesome as hell. Of course, you all, I'm a sucker for this because of uh, we watched The Last Dragon, which is a movie you guys have never seen. But this reminds me of that, which is at the very, very end of the movie when he actually finds the power of the glow and he starts glowing uh, gold, which is fucking rad. Anyway, oh, cool. you guys should watch yeah, that movie. Super it's a fun one. Uh, who are you? I've been asking the same question. Am I the son of a panda, the son of a goose, a student, a teacher? Turns out I am all of them. I am the dragon warrior. Poe makes a badass dragon of chi around him as he uses it and then uses it to dominate Kai. Uh, Poe harnesses his chi, and then Kai's like, I'll, still, I'll take your chi. He's like, you want my chi so bad? Then take it. But of course, it's too much for Kai to take, and he explodes the in a golden ray of is- light. This fight was I, I watching number one a couple weeks ago. I would have never thought we'd get here. Like they went so hard having this giant like dragon summon fight versus a fucking souped up Kratos. So like, cool. and they went for it, man. Like it was visually awesome and like just storytelling wise. I was like, this is hype as hell. Good job, great moment. Panda. <laughs> one by one, all the masters pop back through the peach blossom yin yang. I love that. That's a, that's still a like a through line for the yeah. movie. It's like anytime someone goes into that realm. It's like a yin and yang sign made out of peach blossoms. Really, really cool. Uh, except All except for Poe and Ugwe. They both have really shiny capes, which they compliment on each other on. Uh, Ugwe says, you've grown up, as I hoped you would. <laughs> it's, it's also just that little line that you got to assume is just improv. Like, yeah, it looks really cool when I move this way. Like, <laughs> I love something about the, the way that he's delivering those lines remind me of the way that like when uh, later seasons of South Park, Cartman became very self-serious and like, it just sounded like, like, yeah, when I move this way, my, my cape moves this way. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's <laughs> I love that stuff. It's perfect. You, you, you definitely tell that Jack Black's having fun with those lines, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Which I think is important. Uh, Uguay says, you've grown up as I hoped you would have when I sent that message to your father. He was the one that sent the universal message over to Lee. You finally became the panda you were born to be. On the first day we met, I saw the future of Kung Fu and the past. I saw the panda who could unite them both, both sides of the yin and yang. Uguay then offers Poe his staff. And Poe's like, I can't possibly take that staff. That's your staff. And he goes, just take it. I got a bigger one. <laughs> right. uh, it's you who should decide whether you stay or go. And then Poe goes, wait, wait, I can go back? And then Uguay says, who knows? I've never <laughs> tried. <laughs> and I love that. Uguay continue to be my favorite character. Because you're like, Gold. does any of this matter? Maybe. I don't know. Is it all foretold? It doesn't matter. Uguay is just so peaceful. He's got his inner peace. Yeah. Poe uses Chi and Uguay's staff. Uh, to muster the power and return to the real realm. Of course, he just returns as himself with his normal uh, clothing. He doesn't have a cool cape anymore. His dads rush to his side and hug him. We thought we'd lost you. He says, no, you saved me. You all did. Po then spots Shifu, who is overjoyed until he spots Uguay's staff. And he's like, Po, it's a- wait, where'd you get that? <laughs> and he goes, I think I mastered Chi. And he goes, of course you did. Of course you did. <laughs> and then he uh, humbles himself and says, can you teach me? And we end with the scene of Poe teaching the entire valley and all of the pandas uh, kung fu. And Master Shifu bows to him and Poe bows back. And then he faces all of his students together and they radiate a healing chi throughout the valley. Then we get an epic everybody was kung fu fighting song, which I'm not sure we needed. But it's there. But it felt appropriate. Yeah. I was like, they did, they changed the lyrics. They had a bunch. They made of it shit. about the. Yeah, the I was movie. like, you know what? Good for you. Fine. And it Good was, for was you. Wasn't it Chinese? Yeah, in the first part? a whole bunch cool. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I loved that shit. And then all the flowers blooming. Oh my god, it's cool. They just did it. Yep. It's interesting though, because I'm like, this is a good end of the trilogy. Yeah. Where are we gonna go from here? I'm I'm really Who concerned, knows? but I've been concerned the last couple of weeks too. But I I really don't think four can bring the heat like this. I think if we've learned anything from Saw in review, it's that never count a series out. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Um. So now it's time for a thing I like to call Ragu Bagu. Ragu. Bagu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys here for Kung Fu Panda. Where do we have on the list? We have uh, Shen on the list first. Lord Shed from uh, number two. Right. And uh, then Tai Long. Um, and then Tai Long. Number, number one. Number two Where number one. do we want to put Kai? J.K. Simmons. This is hard, y'all. Dude. This is real hard. Kai. I feel like it's easily better than number one. And I, I still, I love number one. But like. <sighs> I, I'll say the the thing I like about the other heroes, I, I like their motivations more. I think J.K. Simmons just plan is cool as shit and obviously the fighting style the way he looks jk simmons voice in him is awesome but i do uh, i do like the other more like the scorned student and um the this psychopath with gary oldman i i 
I think I like them more, but it's like, it's so tough. Because then we start getting to the math of it. Of like, well, I, I like know. this guy's math. fighting moves yep. better, but I like the motivations here more. See, I go the other way with it, right? Where you're thinking deep, I'm thinking surface level. I just feel like Gary Oldman has such a cool voice. Yeah. And then, what's the other guy? Michael uh, Ian Black. Ian McShane. Ian McShane. <laughs> <laughs> Ian McShane, <laughs> such a cool voice. And then you get J.K. Simmons, and he's got a good voice. But is it Gary Oldman? Is it Michael Ian Black? You know what I mean? Is it Shane Black? Is it Michael Ian? Shane. Can you imagine? Is it? Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> I just feel like uh, I, th I think J.K. Simmons was good in this. I think he was serviceable. I don't. I, I, I just. I'm just a sucker for Ty Long, and I'm a sucker for Gary Oldman. So I'd put him probably last, honestly. I think he's my favorite fighting style. Yeah, hundred percent. And he does the most of it. Yeah, like there's a lot, and it looks sick. So, dude, the part where he launches the jades up in the air and then swings his fucking daggers, and they get launched out there to the dude. That shit was insane. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm going one. I'm going. Whoa, one. Oh, I'm going one. So Nick's at three. I'm at one. I'm, I'm putting him at three. I'm putting him two because again, I I didn't love Ian McShane in that role. Oh, this is. Comes down to I don't like this, <laughs> but I'm gonna go with my gut, which is what I thought when I was watching it. Which is, I think I'm gonna put it number one because the fighting okay. and the jade stuff is so fucking cool. Yeah, it was that it makes for me know. that makes up for the weaker side, which I think is the motivation. Yeah. So we're putting Kai at number one. God, these villains are sick as hell, man. They're great. But yeah. I also feel like on any given day, if I rewatch these, then maybe I would rank them. See, that's the thing is my favorite scene. I think my favorite villain scene in the whole trilogy is Tai Lung escaping from the prison. That mm. sequence yeah. is so, it's scary. Because yeah. you're like, they can't stop this thing. This thing is a fucking wraith. It is a phantom coming at you. And I love that. That's dope. I'll never forget being in the theater. I forgot what we were going to watch together. We were at, uh, I forget what theater we were at, but Kung Fu Panda 4 trailer pops up and it ends. And I looked at Tim, I was like, <laughs> You want to watch these? Like, we're really going to do this? I just was not expecting I, anything yeah. from these movies. I'm with you, man. And I, I haven't awesome. seen the trailer since that moment. Oh, so, yeah. I don't yeah. remember. I don't know. I don't trailer. remember. Yeah. I just want to go in at this point. Yeah. I mean, well, that was me having not watched two or three and kind of forgetting that one was awesome. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, now it's time to rank the Kung Fu Panda universe. Currently, Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2 are tied in an unprecedented <laughs> move. Wow, wow. Should yeah. we tie 3 and just call it a day? No, definitely not. I, three's <laughs> number 1, three? baby. Three's number 1. You think three's number 1? I do. Three's my I, favorite. I think three's number 1, and uh, honestly, like, looking at it, like, I, now having seen these, and this is how in review works, but having seen these, I, I feel like it goes 3, 2, 1. Like, I think that they, they can, only have more and more fun with what they're doing, and at the end of the day, they're very simple things, but they get it right. I think... I think I would put two over this, mainly because of Gary Oldman, the presence, the 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 f cool like fighting moves with those blades on his claws so and shit. Sick. Like there was just there was a lot to love about two. It's really hard to think about why I'd l even like them over one because one has I think the best action still for me, where it was like the most consistent front to back. Yeah, me too. But god dang, these I, I would put two over this because I loved. Uh, Gary Oldman being this psychotic dude and having these awful motivations. I would put three over two. Okay. I love the dad storyline. I love that we get so much more James Hong. I love the little bit of Kate Hudson that we get. I think it's fun. And Perfect. I think the the way that hit that post character development goes from one to two to three, just a really strong trilogy. But Joe, think about, let me tell you this, Joe. Think about when Poe gets back and he's reunited with his father again. And how much, how emotional that made you. Oh, and it was really emotional. He was like, noodle. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's great. It's great. I think that's also another big reason why I would put two over this. was like, the family moments got me more than they got me here. Oh, see, I'm the opposite. I'm with Joey on this one and Tim. I think three is, I think three is better than two. Just because I do, I do love the dichotomy of the two dads. I like how that ties into the the storyline with uh, with Poe's sort of character arc in this, and I think it all just kind of works for me. And again, I'm a sucker for Mr. Ping. I love the character. I love that he got a little bit more of an arc in this than yeah. just being kind of one note like he was in the other movies. And he and had I think growth too. He did have growth too, which is nice. It was good um, all around. So I would say that three is above two for me. Um, I still would put number one at one just because I am a sucker for the hero's origin story. I like the journey better than that. And I think some of the humor <laughs> hit better. And I think it had some perfect hype moments that this one unfortunately didn't have. But if we are making an amendment to last week, I don't know if we are officially or not. I would, I would concede my vote from last week 
just so that we could move this particular thing through the Senate. So then that would, oh. that would result then in 3-2-1? 3-2-1. 3-2-1. Or, or as I call it, now the 3-2-1 go rule. Wow. Which I mean, is that we made I, an amendment I, a lot. I vibe with that. Do we vote as a... As a I, <laughs> yeah, the consensus. I, I think, the yeah, the, the members approve this this movement. Okay. This is a gavel. A, this is now approved, Your Honor. Uh, you're all guilty. We're, we're uh, guilty. Motion. <laughs> we're all guilty, everybody. <laughs> I was going to say, it is You're acquitted. <laughs> go go home. Not, not all. That what did I say, right. Go home and be with God. Go home and be with God. <laughs> go home and be with God. All right, everybody. Uh, we're going to do just that next week when we go see Madam Webb, and then we're going to talk about it. And <laughs> you guys are going to watch it. It's going to be so much fucking fun. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Um, so yeah, join us for that. That should be interesting. Um, and then in a couple weeks, we'll return for Kung Fu Panda 4. High hopes. Maybe not so many high expectations. But hey, so far, they've been fun. So far, they've been great. So uh, let us know what you think of the Kung Fu Panda universe. And until next time, I love you all. Goodbye. And shout out to you, Ben.